Hey there, welcome to another LS tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to develop a, a countdown timer. So I've already started the development here, so let's go through what I've developed so far. So what I've done here is include some 3D text to represent our timer. Now at the moment I've just got it showing 60, but we'll show how we'll update that in a moment. I've renamed it to the name timer. So if we go to the properties, I've also added two properties or two attributes, two variables for this particular 3D text. Uh, the first one here is representing the number of seconds, the second variable is representing the number of minutes. And I've set this to two minutes and zero seconds initially. Now what I'm starting off here in this code here, developing a method called display time to display the current time. So instead of having 60 there, what I wanted to do is have the two followed by a colon and then two zeros. So what I've done here is I've added two variables, two local variables for representing the number of minutes represented as a string and the number of seconds represented as a string. So I've already got some code here for converting this number of seconds into an appropriate string representation. Now the important thing here is if the number of seconds is less than zero, then I want to add an extra additional zero here. So I'll show here I've got the seconds as a string. I join this zero to the number of seconds as a string. Okay, the important thing here is I've used two uh, functions here to convert it to a number of number of seconds as a string. So the first one converts it to a string. The second one here then drops the, the point zero part. So we end up with just a, a whole number. So let me show you how I do something similar for the minute string. So the minute string, set it to a default value first. And then what I'm going to do is go up to the world, object, call my methods, uh, function, sorry. And I'm going to go what as a string. And here I'm going to go the time adopt minutes as a string. Now, if I was to use this as it is, I'd end up with 2.0. So the next thing I need to do is also use this function here. And there we are. So we have integer uh, time adopt minutes as a string. That will get rid of the point zero. So that will just display two. So the last thing I need to do is update the text. So I need to go back to my timer and the properties and I drag this text property in here, set it to an initial default value to begin with, but then we go back to our world and we're going to need to join, call that initially, let's just put default text in there and we'll put that one in there again and again default text so this one will be my minute string that will be my seconds string and this one I want to re replace by a semicolon or a colon sorry okay so what I need to do now is include a method so while something is true I'm going to use that Let's just put true here initially. So I'm going to use this this event to continually update the timer. We we'll should see that in a moment. For now, all I'm going to do is display the time to begin with. So if we play that, we'll see that we've got the correctly formatted time. Okay, so that's that's the start. Now we want to update this so that as our program runs, it updates the time. So that will require another another method, and we'll call that on update time. Okay, and in this case, we we are going to require an if if else condition. Uh, before we do that, though, what we want to do to begin with is go back to our timer. Each time we call this update time we will need to decrement 
will decrease the number of seconds by one. So I'll put this up here. So we'll decrement the timer number of seconds by one. Now what we want to do is check whether this has gone below zero. Because if it goes below zero, then we need to reset the number of seconds to 59. So here we're going to need some sort of conditional check. And we're going to check if number of seconds is less than zero. So we go back over to here and drag back in our number of seconds. So if the number of seconds is less than zero, what we want to do is actually set this. Set the value to other, set that to 59. So that restarts the clock, the number of seconds, but we also want to decrease the number of minutes by one. If it's not less than zero, that's all we need to do. And finally at the end, we need to call the method here to display the updated time. And that's pretty well all we need to do for now. So if we call that, or indeed we need to call the update time, if we play that, we can see the timer is being updated. Now, something we need to be a little bit wary of is the timing for this. So the timer display is going to take, let's check the duration of this. Now we need to make sure that the duration of each of these, calling each of these methods is going to take approximately one second. So each time we call update timer, it's going to take one second to complete. So if we go into here, let's just make sure that all of these, okay, that has a zero duration. This one has a zero second duration, so that's good. Just double check this one as well. That's zero seconds. So calling this will take approximately zero seconds. Might take a little bit longer, but we're not going to really notice the difference. This one here, again, checking the duration. That's okay. And this final one, duration of one second. So the time taken to display the time will be one second, which is precisely what we're after. So again, let's just double check that. And we see we've got a pretty good countdown going on here. Speed it up, see what happens when it goes, the number of seconds goes below 10. There we are, we can see we've got that zero out in there, and when it goes below a minute, this one drops down to there. And let's just see that one, one running through. And we'll see in a moment, we're going to have it hit a problem. So now we're back to negative numbers, we don't want that. So we want some way of actually checking when we're done. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to add an additional property here, create a new variable, and we're going to set that to a Boolean, and we'll call that timer finished. Now initially that's going to be false. Okay, now what we want to do is go back to update timer, and we need to check. So we're going to put a check in here, so I'll put an if condition, and so we want to check that if the timer, the number of minutes, and the number of seconds are both equal to zero, then we're going to set that this boolean uh, variable here to true. Right, so we need to go back over to our world, and we're going to need an and. And let's just quickly run through this. So if, uh, let's see, the number of seconds equals zero. And let's drag this one across here again as well. And the number of minutes equals zero. And we want to set that to true. And here we want to then finally go up to uh, hang on so while well, 
not. And let's replace this one by time of finish. Well, not time of finish, let's do all this. 